Hello class, welcome to today's lesson in which we're going to go over 2.9, Introduction to Algebraic Fractions. You already did some work from this lesson, which was the evaluation of, of algebraic fractions, okay? That was very simple. Now let's go to the next thing, which is the simplification. of algebraic fractions. Algebraic fractions. Okay, and this is one of the first times that we're gonna apply our knowledge of factorization. Okay? It's gonna come in handy. You're gonna you're gonna notice why in a moment. Okay, let's first understand some fact. If you remember when when we have two fractions for example, a over b times c over d. Remember that we can multiply these two fractions by multiplying the numerators, a times c. And that's going to be over the multiplication of the denominators, b times d. So we know that this is a fact. And, uh, you know, the equal sign is... Um, a sign that goes in both ways, right? We can say that either this is equal to this or this is equal to this. Kind of like going in reverse. We can, If we know that this is a fact, then we can also write the following. If we know that A times C, or no, 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 better. Uh, A times C over B times D is also equal to a over b times c over d. Basically, we, we can go backwards. That's what I'm trying to tell you. We can go from here to here to this form or backwards from this form of a fraction to a separated version, so to speak. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Why is this important? Well, because what happens when you have something like this? a times b over c times b there is something known as the law of cancellation even though i don't like that name very much uh that's that's how it's commonly uh known and it tells you that when you have a fraction like this in which you have a factor in the numerator which is, and the same factor in the denominator you can cancel them and what you end up with is just a over c I think that by now you you know about this this law. Now why this why is this true? Because of what I told you in here. Let me reproduce that thing. That that law can be proven correct when we look at this law. Well, at, at this fact, if we if we have this which looks very similar to this, we can separate in this way. This is, this is going to be equal to a over c times b over b, according to this fact. Can you see? I'm just using this fact. Something that I know to be true, I'm applying it right here. And we know that uh, if we look at this fraction, b over b, that's going to be 1. And any number fraction or whatever times one is going to give me the same fraction, right? So yes, in fact, all of this will eventually end up looking like this. And we may think that we are canceling the b's, okay? In fact, what is happening is that we are applying this, this law or this fact, and it all boils down to kind of like a cancellation of equal factors. Now, don't make the mistake that a lot of people do. A lot of people. This is extremely common, guys. It's so common, I, I, need, I need to warn, warn you about this. A lot of people mistake this fact or this uh, property of cancellation, and they, they try to attempt something like this. If you have a fraction like so, A plus B over C plus B, people also want to cancel b and b and they're going to tell you that all of this is equal 
to A over C in the end. This is extremely wrong. This is plain wrong. Why? Because this, this law is telling you that the fraction or the, the numerator and the denominator have to be completely factorized. They have to be multiplications. A times B and over C times B. It, it's not telling you about a plus, okay? You cannot, you cannot uh, say that it's the same. You have to follow the, the law and the rules just as they are. And it's only working for the case of multiplication, not for the case of addition. Okay, so don't make that mistake, please. Okay, now, how can this help us do something? Well, I'm going to give you three examples of what, what is known as simpli simplifications of fractions, like I said a moment ago. And the first one is this. What if I give you these two fractions? This numerator over this denominator. And I tell you to simplify all of this fraction. This numerator over this denominator. How does that work? What does it mean to simplify this? Okay, what we need to, to do first is try a factorization of the numerator and try the factorization of the denominator. If you want, take these two problems on its own. I'm gonna do that in blue. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna try the factorization of the numerator uh, over here in another isolated place in my notebook or something, in another piece of paper. And that's, I'm gonna just focus on this, factorizing this numerator. So let's do it. This is not a, perfect square trinomial, it's not a difference of squares, so it looks like simply a general uh, trinomial of the second degree. So I open up parentheses and I try to come up with four numbers such that their multiplication give me all of this. So the first ones are easy. X and X are the only possibilities for X squared. And now we have minus 21. This one's simple, right? It can be seen immediately that this is going to be the answer. So this is the factorization. Now that I know it, I bring it back. You see, all of this is equal to all of this. So I'm just replacing. And now let me attempt the factorization of the denominator. Again, independently, I can go to any other part in my notebook and try this factorization. This is also very simple. It's going to be 3 and 2, right? This factorization, when you multiply these two binomials, you will get this. So, okay. We bring it over here. And we have the following. We have that this fraction is equal to this fraction, which is completely factorized in the, in the numerator and completely factorized in the denominator. Complete factorization. Okay, now what can I do? I can observe that I have two common factors in the numerator and in the denominator. Two equal factors, in fact, uh, which is, in this case, x plus 3. Now, they, it doesn't have to be like uh, one on top, one on top of the other, okay? This, this is the same as having this. If you want to rearrange the factors, that's okay, even though it's not necessary. Remember that the order of factors doesn't affect the product. So I can, I can change the order of the factors so that you can have one on top of the other if you want. It's not, it's not a necessity. And now I can proceed to cancel equal factors, this and this. And finally, I end up with just x minus seven over x plus two. So in the end, guys, in the end, all of this fraction, after I perform this process of, of simplification, but by doing all of this process, will be the same as this.
okay and this would be my answer this is the simplified version of this fraction let's try another one number two let's write 2x squared minus 4x minus 30 over 2x squared minus 7x minus 15. And first, let me attempt the factorizations of both my numerator and my denominator. I take this, I bring it somewhere else, and I try to factorize. Maybe it's not gonna be possible, remember. Factorizations are not always possible, and when that happens, we call the expression or the polynomial, we call it prime. Okay, so let's start. This one seems to be 2x and x, that, that's gonna give me 2x squared. And now, two numbers in here that multiplied gives me minus 30. Uh, let's try minus 15 and plus two. And now I need to have the multiplication of these two plus the multiplication of these two being equal to this. Does that work? No. So I need to change my these two numbers. So what about mm, minus 5? and six okay let's let's do the calculations in the mind no it's not working yet nope what about changing the order i'm gonna put the minus five in here and the plus six in here plus six times minus five minus 30 and now the multiplication of these two plus the multiplication of these two will give me minus 4x. That's right. So, so this is the good one. And if remember, if you, if you are in doubt, multiply all of these binomials and you will realize that you get this. So let me bring it back over here to my main problem. And we are done with the numerator. Now let's go to the denominator. Again, we try to factorize now the denominator, this. So we have 2x squared minus 7x minus 15. We open up parentheses. This is going to be 2x. This is going to be x. And we have the following possibility, maybe minus five in here and plus three in here. Yeah, this is gonna be the good one, okay? You know, the more practice you get in, in factorizing polynomials, you can see the factorization, the what numbers you need to use kind of quickly, okay? So j just practice, guys. Practice makes perfect. So I'm gonna paste my solution in here my factorization perfect so all of this is equal to all of this and now I can apply the law of cancellation which is which says that when I have the numerator and the denominator completely factorized both of them and if they share one common factor or even more I can cancel them and so my end result will be 2x plus 6 over 2x plus 3. Oh, but you know, I didn't realize about this. Look, guys, L look at this numerator. We can further factorize this one, right? You see what I mean? Because I, I did not completely factorize that this, this polynomial. I did not completely factorize it. And it shows in here. This binomial can be further factorized. Let's do it. It's gonna it's very simple, right? It's just 2 times x plus 3. Can you see that? 
uh, it's not gonna help us do anything but uh but, but uh that's that's the way it, it should look okay so either way whether you write this or this as the final answers both are fine because both are already simplified versions of my main fraction or my original fraction remember this is the same as this guys the fact that something is simplified doesn't mean that it's different it's just simplified okay all of this thing is the same as that or that it's just this just looks simplified okay one final example number three minus x squared minus 3x minus 2 over x squared plus 5x plus 6. Same idea. Let's factorize numerator and denominator independently. Let's attempt the factorizations. So I open up parentheses. Uh, two numbers that multiply together give me minus x squared. Well, that's going to be minus x and x. And for these two, I'm going to have perhaps minus 2. Now, let me put the minus 2 here and the plus 1 in here. So minus 2 times plus 1 is going to give you minus 2. And the multiplication of these two plus the multiplication of these two will give me this one, right? So, in fact... My factorization is correct. I bring it to my main problem over here and I write all of this is equal to minus x minus 2 times x plus 1 over same idea with the denominator. Let's factorize. This looks very simple. I'm going to go directly to the factorization. It's going to look like x plus 3 times x plus 2. So let's write that down. Okay, there you go. I'm done with the factorizations. And are they complete? Yes, because each of these binomials, as you can see, cannot be further factorized. So my, my factorizations are complete. Now, if you notice, guys, this, uh, we are currently in here, and it doesn't look like there is a common factor in the numerator or the denominator. It looks as though that's the case. But if you remember my little trick about the double multiplication of minus 1, we can actually use it here. And that's very common in these types of uh, problems. We can use that, that technique, the double multiplication of minus 1. For example, you may notice that this binomial and this binomial only differ in the signs of the terms. We have x and x and we have 2 and 2 and both signs are changed. Minus for plus, there is a plus in here although it's invisible so to speak and there is a minus here and a plus in here. When that's the case, when that's the case, both signs are changed, not just one, both. You can employ the trick of double multiplication by minus 1, and you will get the following. I'm going to multiply all of this by minus 1 twice. Minus 1 times minus 1 times minus x minus 2 times x plus 1 over my denominator, like so. And then, remember... When you use this trick, you're going to use one of those minus 1s for one factor. I'm going to multiply this minus 1 times this, this, fact, this factor or this binomial. And I'm going to use the other one for the other. So let's multiply minus 1 times minus x minus 2. What are you going to get? You're going to get x plus 2, right? Because this minus will change the sign of both of them. And when you use this minus 1 for this one, you will get minus x minus 1. Am I right? Yeah, right? And the denominator is kept equal. 
nothing happened to the denominator. And now you can see that by applying this little trick of the double multiplication by minus 1, we end up having equal factors, x plus 2 and x plus 2. So we cancel them, even though they are not on top of one another. That doesn't make any difference. And my end result will be minus x minus 1 over x plus 3. And this is my end result. So basically, my conclusion is this. My original fraction is the same as this fraction, but this is just a simplified version of this one. So this is how simplification of fractions work. And now you just go to the workbook and accept the exercises from page, let me tell you, from page 102 from the book from La Universidad. Let's do all of them, okay? I want you to do all of them. I want you to get a lot of practice. So let's work, guys.